Every summer, carnivals like this sprout up across the American landscape. It's a place to have fun, eat some cotton candy. You can ride the Ferris wheel, go through the haunted house, go on the bumper cars, and even take the little kitties on the dragon wagon. But after a few neon-filled nights, these carnivals and sideshows pack up their tents seemingly in the middle of the night. They're destined for a stint in another town somewhere else down the road. But where do the carnies all go when winter rolls around? We're going to take a little trip to Gibsonton, Florida, to a town that has a lot of weird history. So how did Gibtown become the place where carnies go to disappear until the next circus season? Well, in 1936, Al the Giant Tomaney and his wife Jeannie the Half Girl chose Gibsonton as their winter retreat. Soon after, their carnival friends like the Lobster Boy and Monkey Girl would follow. When winter brought the circus tents down, Gibsonton became an off-season retreat for acrobats, fire eaters, contortionists, and freaks. You know, I always loved the circus. It gave me more like a creepy feeling, you know? That's what I love about it. <laughs> they spend 80% of their time on the road, and then when they go home, this is the place they go home to. We drove around town to see if we could find any colorful carnies, like the human seal or monkey girl walking the streets. But after a full day of roaming around with no sightings, we were told the best place to find the strange and unusual in Gibtown was the Showtown Bar. Go to Showtown. We just needed the guts to go in. When I first got here, it reminded me of something on the movie Deliverance. <laughs> Once you started looking at the people and not what they look like, yeah, everyone's just beautiful here. That's why this little town was created for people like that. They're not outcasts here. They can walk into the restaurant. They can walk into the bar. It's a place that was created for carnival and circus people. There's a lot of families here in town that have lived here for generations in the carnival business. I've raised my whole family here, and it's just a nice neighborhood. You can still drive down the streets here and still see the circus performers out practicing. The carnival people painting their trucks, the Ferris wheels being set up. We have a cemetery, we have a, a scholarship, we have a, uh, it's the only town in the whole country like it. I've been here 14 years and I ain't planning on moving. <laughs> You're a carny at heart, man. That's why you ended up down here. Our new friends from the bar last night told us to check out Giants Camp Restaurant. This is where a lot of carnies here for the winter start their day with coffee and scrambled eggs. But when we walked in, you could have heard a pin drop. Hey, get out! No one at the Giants Camp wanted to talk to us on camera. Were they hiding out from ex-wives, alimony, and the IRS? We were thinking that strange and unusual people in Gibtown might be a thing of the past. To find out, we got a tip to track down one of Gibtown's most famous residents. Here we go! Hey! Hey! When illusionist Roy Houston traveled with the carnival back in its heyday, his show was a must-see live performance. Show us what you got here, Roy. Oh, boy. Oh, man. There it is. <laughs> All 65 grades for it. Wow. Oh, man. But other entertainments, such as TV and movies, began competing with sideshows. And now it seems the sight of human oddities or a magician sewing a woman in half will be relegated to nostalgia. Roy, how do you think people down here uh, in Gibsonton feel about the death of the sideshows? Well, it's... Uh... Yeah, it's all nostalgia now, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's we all feel bad about it. it. It's just it was an art form all by itself. It's something that's just now it's it's just gone. Uh, in fact, usually it's, it's very difficult to to date to the right to the exact second when something died. Well, boy, I, I can really do this one for you because my next door neighbor Ward Hall had the last sideshow in America, and the last Halloween Ward had his sideshow set up, and right there Ward announced, "This is it." He said, "You'll never see the sideshow in the air ever again." <laughs> and that was Farewell it. Farewell to freaks. That was it, man. And, that was, and, that, and I thought he was kidding. Thanks for the uh, great tour there, Roy. <laughs> well, it's glad to have pleasure. you. Thanks, Roy. Yeah. That's really okay. something. Okay, very good. Thank Bye. you, guys. All righty. Could Roy be right? Hey. Bye -bye. Could this be the death of the sideshow? Coming up on Weird US, we meet the king of the sideshow and cut to the chase with the next generation of sideshow performers. <laughs> You're watching Weird US on the History Channel. 
Almost 70 years ago, Gibsonton, Florida became the unofficial winter home for those who performed in the carnivals and sideshows. And the king of the sideshow is Ward Hall, who claims to have performed in every state except Alaska. We made an appointment with the legendary Mr. Hall to ask him if he thought the circus sideshow would soon be relegated to weird history. Good afternoon. Mr. Hall? I am indeed. How, How are you? You're Mark. Yep. And you must be Mark. I'm yes, not I expecting am. you. Won't you come in? Thank you Thank very you. much. Ward Hall's World of Wonders brought the strange and unusual right to your hometown. Ladies and gentlemen, the World of Wonders is the largest circus sideshow in the world. Please remember the attractions here are not pictures. And you're going to see a show that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, the show's ready to start. There goes Mark swallowing the sword. Thank you, Mark. Hurry along. It's showtime. I'm in. I'm sold. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but things have changed here in Gibtown, and the sideshow legends of the past are getting harder to find. The show may be over for the human seal, but we did meet someone who's been eating fire in Ward's sideshow since the early days. So, Pete, how, how did you hook up with uh, Ward here? How long have you been working together? I started in 1954. And, uh, wow. Yeah, a little bit of a century. <laughs> Pete, Pete's been with me now since 1954. He's the oldest one. Can you tell us about some of the stranger acts that you've featured in your sideshow over the years? Well, yes. I think uh, there's been so many. Among the very strange people that I had uh, was uh, Emmett and Priscilla Bajani. She was the monkey girl, and her husband was the alligator skin man. Did they want to be in the sideshow? I could give you numerous examples of why it was a wonderful thing for people to be in a sideshow. I'm going to take the, probably the greatest sideshow star who ever lived. And that was Betty Lou Williams. She came from a very poverty-stricken family in Albany, Georgia. When she was born, her baby sister was a parasitic twin. It grew out of her abdomen. And at the height of her career, she was earning about $5,000 a week. That would be the equivalent in today's money of about $75,000 a week. Wow. So did you think she wanted to be in show business? <laughs> There's no smoking gun as to why freaks like Betty Lou Williams are disappearing in Gibtown, but undoubtedly better medical care during pregnancy and our politically correct times are factors. Finally, even the day came when sideshow legend Ward Hall packed up his tent in 2003. It, people just became a little harder to shock, right? Was that really the death of the sideshow, do you think? First of all, you, you said is that the death of the sideshow. The sideshow didn't die. A uh, sideshow today, if you can put one on somewhere, is just as popular and more money-making than ever. You'd have to hire two or three people just to count your money. <laughs> <laughs> Ward Hall is the ultimate showman, and his optimism got us believing the sideshow isn't dead yet. We found a couple of sideshow performers living in Gibtown who are still bringing the show to your town each year. We're about to meet Matthew Bovier and his wife Felicity, and they are some of the younger entertainers we've met here in Gibtown. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Hi, Felicity. Hi, Felicity. Hi, Felicity. Hi, Felicity. Yeah. What's happening? Hey, How are you? Hey, Great setup hey you wait. Here. You trying to rope me in? <laughs> <laughs> Those carnival folk are always trying to rope in the mark. Oh. It's just like throwing a baseball. Don't try to spin it. Just throw okay. it. Just keep your keep that wrist straight. And uh... oh. uh, you think I have a, a career in this carnival life? Let's not find <laughs> out. I can't teach you anymore. <laughs> it's already competitive enough. <laughs> Most of the people we met here are kind of semi-retired or just traveling through. Uh, you guys look a little younger. Uh, can you explain that to me? Well, we kind of break the rules. You see, uh, Gibtown was real. Uh, big when the carnival industry was focused more on the live entertainment. Well, now the live entertainment aspect of it's pretty much gone, but you're mainly in a, in a very submerged into a show business community, which is nice. And they're the only city in the entire country that is zoned residential show business, which means I can park my RV here, I can park my show here, 
I could park an elephant here if I wanted to. <laughs> but it's fun, you know, I sit out here with a, whatever, my carny buddies in the neighborhood and we throw knives all day long and drink beer. Barbecue and beer drinking and knife throwing, man. That's what it's about, you that know. relaxation. Put out a little Dick Dale, is. fire up the barbecue, and we're happy. <laughs> Good, baby. All right, why don't, why don't you hold some flowers for me? Okay. Yeah, so how fond are you of that nose? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chuck, I ready to go for a ride? Be on the lookout for Matthew and Felicity when the carnival rolls into your town this year. Back. What a trip. Hi, guys. Hi, Emily. Thank God you're back. What's going on around here? Oh, all this mail I do not know what to do with. Oh, oh man. man. This stuff never ends. Well, it looks like we got a lot of weird history to go through. Rest assured, once we sorted all this out, we'll be your travel guides to some of America's strangest history. We'll see you on the Weird Roads. For 150 years, scientists have chased the missing links of evolution. Some experienced rejection, some committed fraud, and some may have opened the doors to over three million years of human history. Eight to Man, Sunday at 9, on the History Channel. The evolution of evolution begins.